terminology. Consumers, this is a real simple term. You and me, we eat. We're consumers. There's different kinds of consumers. There's herbivores. Only eat producers. You might say plants. Only eat plants, but there's other producers that aren't plants. Carnivores. These, it should say only. Only eat consumers or other animals, so to speak. Or meat, you would say. Omnivores, they eat both producers and consumers. Most humans are omnivores. Some humans are herbivores. I've actually seen a diet called the carnivore diet. And it is a meat diet, basically. People swear by the diet. They think it, it gets them in great physical condition, gets them really lean. I don't know if it's a good diet if all you're eating is meat, but I wouldn't suggest it. But there's a diet called the carnivore diet. If you're a strict, strict vegetarian, you would be an herbivore. Some vegetarians eat eggs, and that would not make you an herbivore. That would make you a, a, an omnivore. Some vegetarians eat fish. That would make you an omnivore, right? But if you're a strict vegan, you would be an herbivore. Detrivores, these are the organisms they help recycle dead dead things basically back into the earth and back into the environment they eat waste or dead decomposing things decomposers on the other hand they are a special kind of detrivore all right so not all detrivores are decomposers detrivores could be vultures bacteria and fungus vultures fly around they see something dead and they swoop in and eat it basically um, they would be basically a detrivore but vultures are not decomposers. Decomposers are only the bacteria and the fungi. They have a major job. Their major job is to recycle nutrients. All right, let's talk about energy flow. So how does energy move through uh, the living things in, a, in an environment? Basically, each feeding level is called a trophic level, All right? So let's go over here. You have primary producers. These are your producers. All right. On land, they're plants, and in the ocean, they're probably going to be plankton or algae. All right. The things that eat the producers are called first order or primary consumers. The things that eat the primary consumers are called second order consumers. If you eat a second, you are now called a third. A fancy word for third is tertiary. Third get eaten by fourth, which is called quaternary. So you start with the producers, primary or first, secondary, third, and fourth. If you had something that ate the fourth, it would be called the fifth. If you do not get eaten, you are at the top of the food chain and you are a top consumer. So note, the arrows show the flow of energy. The plant's energy goes to this herbivore, okay, this grasshopper. This grasshopper's energy goes to this next small mammal. The small mammal gets eaten by the snake and the snake's energy finally goes to this hawk. So let's talk. So what I just showed you was technically a food chain. The energy of the grass goes to the grasshopper. The grasshopper goes to the frog. Their energy goes to the python. The python to the eagle in this case. So this is one food chain. You take a bunch of food chains and you connect them, you get what's called a food web. All right. So don't screw up the, the arrows. The arrows show you the flow of energy. The corn's energy goes to the grasshopper. The grasshopper's energy goes to the rat and the frog. The rat and the frog, their energy goes, in this case, to the python. The wolf also takes some of the rat's energy. The frog goes all the way to the eagle and so on and so forth. So you got a lot of stuff going on in a food web that can get complicated. So you have a food web example um, here. Let's go through it. How many herbivores can be found on this food web? Well, herbivores eat only the plant in this case. The mouse eats a plant and a grasshopper, so it doesn't eat only the plant. The grasshopper eats only the plant. So how many herbivores do we have? One, and it is the grasshopper. How many carnivores do we have? Carnivores are strictly meat eaters. This mouse eats plant, so that's not a carnivore. This grasshopper eats a plant, so that's not a carnivore. The three carnivores are the owl, the frog, and the snake. Right. How many omnivores do you have? Omnivores eat the plant and, um, and a consumer. So the mouse 
eats the green plant and it eats the grasshopper, which is also a consumer. So the omnivore is the mouse. We have one mouse omnivore. Which order consumer is the frog? So we want to know what number is the frog. Frog is right here. So you start at the producer. Producers don't eat, so there's zero. Zero, one, two. The frog is a second order consumer. Which trophic level does the snake belong to? So this is pretty much, and this says which trophic level, so it could be more than one order eater. So let's figure out, let's go to the snake. There's more than one way to get to the snake. There's two arrows that get to the snake. All right, so let's talk about all the possible ways to get to the snake. Let's start here. Let's start simple. Plant is zero, mouse is one, snake is two. It is a second order. Okay, that's one way to get there. Let's do it another way. The green plant, that's zero, one, two, three. So it is a third order. So the snake is a second and a third order. Okay. Let's do the next one. Which trophic levels does the mouse belong to? Here's the mouse. The mouse is a first or primary, and it is also a zero, one, two. It is also a secondary. So it is a first, and it is also a one. Whoops, go back. It is also a one, two, secondary. Which organism competes with the snake? If you compete with the snake, it means you probably eat the same thing. Who competes with the snake? So who eats the mouse and the frog in this case? The owl is the snake's competitor. Which organism should have the most abundant biomass? So as you go up, as you go up a food chain, so you start from the bottom and you start going up, right? As you, the bottom of the food chain, the plants have the most biomass. So the organism with the biggest number will have the least biomass. So the highest order consumer would have the least biomass. The lowest on the food chain has the most biomass. So who would have the most biomass here? The green plants. Which organisms should have the least abundant biomass? That would be the snake and the owl. That's because they're the highest up the food chain. Zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. The snake and the owl would have the least amount of biomass. As you go up a food chain, only 10%, about 10% of the energy goes up a food chain. So in this case, the producers would have 10,000 joules of energy. The next level up would only have 1,000 joules of energy. That's 10% that gets passed on, which means 90% of the energy is lost between feedings. Due to this, as you go up a food chain, this, this pyramid represents biomass. So this is the biomass at the bottom. You go up, you only have 10%, so to speak, of the biomass because biomass can be converted into energy. Then you go up another one, the biomass drops again, and the biomass drops again. Because of this phenomenon, you generally don't see food chains any higher than, say, four, five. You don't usually see them higher than that. That's because... This increasing, when it graduates, 90% is lost, 90% is lost, 90% is lost. Eventually, you don't have enough to lose anymore. You can't su support a whole nother feeding level. So 90% of the energy is lost, and a great deal of that is lost because you have less biomass when you, when you go up the food chain. Where does that extra energy go? A lot of it is lost as heat through in the energy transfer process. We're going to stop there.